at 40 seconds. Good morning, God Saints, and welcome to Scott's Chapel Online Ministries and our worship service this morning, and happy Memorial Day to all of our veterans and people of service. God bless you and God smile upon you. We are ready to worship the Lord. Somebody say amen out there. And without further ado, let us turn our attention to Minister DeWitt Johnson as he leads us in our opening hymn. Praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody, if you love Jesus out there, just say, I love Jesus. Give him praise and give him glory because he's worthy of every hallelujah and he's worthy of every praise. Listen up.
Right. Always have your Bible. Always have a pen and paper ready to write down what thus said the Lord. But two key passages of scripture I want you to jot down. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 in verse 20 it says for no matter how many promises God has made they are yes in Christ. Yes. And so through him the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Another passage I want you to put in your memory banks is 2 Peter All right. chapter 1. Beginning in verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. And just for a moment we want to look at the subject of accessing the promises of God. Accessing the promises of God. Memorial Day reminds me that we are still at war. Yes. War on many fronts. On the home front, in the international front, global front, our nation. We're dealing with the pandemic. We're dealing with the environment. We're dealing with so many things on different fronts. Yeah. But it is sometimes a discerning truth for many of us that even though we belong to Jesus through faith in him we still seem to have the same problems that plagued us before we were saved. All right. We often become discouraged and bogged down by life's cares. The Bible tells us that God knows and cares about us and about our problems. Yes. But he has said that problems and worries are inevitable in this life. He told John to write down this in the 16th chapter, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. Mm -hmm. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus has given us a promise that if we turn over our burdens, our problems, our hurts, our frustrations, whatever hindrance we have, we need to give it to him. And it is our responsibility to give it to God. Mm -hmm. This is what the Bible tells us to do. Jesus is able to handle our cares, our COVID-19, oh, yes. our whatever fill in the blanks. But we must turn it over to him. God has made promises after promises. In Numbers 23 and 19 he says God is not a man that he should lie nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? No, God keeps his word. God fulfills his promises. Now promise is a declaration that one will do or refrain from doing something specified. And it gives the person to whom it is made a right to claim the performance or forbearance of a specified act. God has given his promises that he will be with us, that he will help us through whatever we go through. Yes. God has also placed commands in Scripture. 
And there's a difference between a command and a promise. Mm -hmm. A command from God is something that we should do. A promise from God is something that God will do. A command must be obeyed. But a promise must be believed. And when God gives a command, he says, you will. But when God gives a promise, he says, I will. And that's why Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. The promises of God are not yes and no. They are not, I don't know, or maybe so, right. or we'll see. The promises of God are definite and sure and it says yes and amen to put a parentheses on it and a period and a comma and an explanation point. All right. If God said it, then it shall come to pass. Amen. For God can be counted on. And God wants us to prosper in every way of life. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to win the Powerball and be a $500 million, million dollar billionaire. All right. That doesn't mean you get everything you want. But God will provide everything that you need. Spiritually, physically, mentally. But we need to position ourselves to receive God's promise to access the promises of God. The context of these passages of scripture can be looked at as these Christians were under persecution. They were in a metropolis area, but yet they were accusing Paul of breaking his promise because his travel plans changed and he was not able to come to Corinth. Some were even casting doubt about his message of Christ. That he preached so he wrote back and established that he was not a promise breaker. And certainly God is not evil. God's promises are many running from Genesis to Revelation and these promises are made by God himself and therefore will be kept. These promises reflect not just his words, but his character, his nature. And these promises are established beyond all doubt. That word Paul used when he says yes, in Greek means certain or true. Now I know it's hard to believe because some of us say one thing, but we mean something totally different. Some of us say yes when we're really saying no. No. Some say no when they're saying yes. He's not talking about man's fickleness, but he's talking about the almighty God. And when God says yes, right. you need to just say amen. And amen is Hebrew and means so be it or it is already done or fully accomplished. Whenever we pray in a prayer, and I, I say amen. I, I don't have to bring it back up because I know it's already accomplished. I've already, it's already answered by God because I've ended it by God's seal of amen. amen. And these promises are given for the glory of God, not just for our good. Jesus also reminds us, just as an earthly father would not deny his children bread, so our Heavenly Father has promised good gifts to those who love Him and to those who ask of Him. He's promised that He will allow no trial to be so great that we cannot bear it and that He will provide a means of escape. Oh, we have some promises. Oh, yes. So I want to look at five things that God's promises are fulfilled in our lives. First, we're saved by a promise. 
1 John 2 and 25, and this is what he promised us, even eternal life. Yes. See, to access the promises of God first require that you are of God. That you have believed and received God's promise of salvation. You need to know that there is some urgency in accepting Jesus Christ. For one day, it may be too late. That's a promise. Because God is patient though. He's given us time right now to decide and to follow Jesus the Christ. Oh, you can act like everything is all right. You, you can take off your mask and your gloves. You, you can go everywhere you want to. All right. But I'm telling you, you better be prepared. You better be willing to meet your maker. Yes, sir. 2 Peter 3 and 9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. But he's patient with you. Yeah. Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come into repentance. And if somebody is ready to receive the promises of forgiveness in eternal life, then confess right now that you are a sinner and repent from the way you've been living. Believe that Jesus is the promised one and that when he died on the cross, yeah. He did it for you as your substitute. He paid the price for your sins. But none of this applies to you until you surrender and receive that promise into your life. For when his son died, he guaranteed that those who are adopted into his family through faith will inherit what he promised. Yes. Secondly, be not anxious to activate the promises of God. Philippians 4 and 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, yes. with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding yes. will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Yes. Paul is telling us that we should pray and make our requests known to God. But firstly, he's telling us not to be anxious. This is step one. There's no need to go to step two if step one is not followed. That's it. God's instructions to access his promises are specific in the way they are written and the way they're supposed to be followed. You must follow the instructions if, if you want to get the desired results. If you don't follow the God's instructions, then there's no need in blaming God for the lack of results. Just go back to the Word of God and find where you missed the mark. An anxious heart will not be able to receive the promises of God by faith. Be anxious for nothing. nothing. Do not have any anxiety about anything. That's right. As one translation says, then you can make your request made known to God and the desired result would be peace of mind and heart. Peace is the desired result of praying in accordance to God's will to access this promise. Oh, yeah. Thirdly, we must abide. Not only not to be anxious, but we must abide. Jesus has told us in John 15 and 7, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, yeah. you will ask yeah. what you desire. Yeah, that's it. And it shall be done for you. I hope I'm preaching to somebody this oh, morning. Yeah, yeah. We grumble and complain about being at home or not having this and not having this and, and not being able to do this. But I'm telling you, you're anxious over nothing. Amen. And we have been commanded, before I can access the promises of God, quit worrying over stupid stuff. Quit worrying about stuff that does not matter. Do not be anxious, but you also must abide in me. Jesus, the master teacher, said it so simply and directly. 
Step one, you must abide in him. Step two, his words must abide in you. Step three, ask what you desire and it will be done for you. You can't skip the steps. You can't rearrange those steps. You see, the word of God always flows together. You are not going to have anxiety if you're going to do what Jesus says to do. If you're abiding in Jesus and his words are abiding in you, then you are going to the Father in prayer, anxiety free, and the end result will be peace of God will keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So I need not to be anxious. I need not to, I need to abide in him. But fourthly, I need to ask. James said it like this. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. Come on now. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. Mm -hmm. That you may spend it on your pleasure. James 4, 2 and 3. Again, if you're abiding in Christ, you are not going to ask amiss. The apostle James was saying here, I'm going to ask rightly according to the will and purposes of God. And if I ask in the will of God, the things of God, God is going to answer that promise. In John 16 and 23, in that day you will ask me nothing, most assuredly. I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Yes. Until now you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. I don't know how you feel, but I need some joy. Oh, yeah. I need some peace of mind. I need to quit worrying about the madness going around and I'm going to make my request known to God. I'm going to ask the Father and He is going to help me. I'm going to abide in Him and I'm not going to ask the miss. Yeah. And peace is the end result of my prayer. Not just what I ask for, but the peace is really what I need. I need to have a peace of mind about what my life is. Jesus was saying that we ought to ask so that our joy may be full also. God wants us to have joy and peace. And he's telling us in his word what to do in order to access those promises. Lastly, we must believe. Proverbs 3, and that writer Solomon says, Trust in the Lord with yeah. all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. To experience the impossible becoming possible, we must believe the promises of God. The promises of God are a revelation of his will and manifested through his purpose in my life in this time. When we act in obedience Come on to his will, he will back us up. We can be sure that God is going to fulfill his promises. Yeah. We should not step out recklessly in attempting the impossible by ourselves. But I want to make sure that I'm wrapped up in Jesus. Yeah. That I'm having his promises yes, for my life. So the next time you feel fear grip your heart, change your focus to the word of God. Believe the promises of God with all your heart. Isaiah says, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for what I sent. And Peter says that God's divine power has given us everything we need for life 
and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his glory and goodness. Yeah. You can do what you want, but I'm going to live by the promises of God. I might not have a lot of money. I know I don't look good. I know I can't say. I know I ain't got this, and I don't have that. But what I do have is the promise that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. That's it. I got the promise that I am a child of the God Most High. I have the promise that he loves us. I got a promise that I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus my Lord. I got a promise. God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I got a promise Hallelujah. that he'll never leave me yeah. nor forsake me. So I'm going to take my promise that God has and I'm trying to share those promises with you. You let the mercy of God be your swift transition. You let the grace of God Renew your mind, body, and spirit. You let the promise of God carry you to here and beyond. Jesus says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word, my word. will never pass away. I want to tell you that there's real power in God's word. For by his word, sinners are made saints. By his word, dismal lives are transformed into victorious disciples. Yeah. By his word, it is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. By his word is the key to unlock a hardened heart. His word is a sure bed to rest upon, a sure foundation. His word is bread to the hungry, water to the thirsty to the lonely and rest for the weary. I may have problems, but I got a promise. I may have a little stress, but God is stronger than any stress. I may have giants, but God is greater than any giant put together. I may have weakness, but His grace is sufficient. Beloved, we got a promise from God. Oh, yes. So if you want to access that, Thank you, Lord. get into the Word of God and ask God to help you to receive the gift that He has for you. God bless you. And God smile upon you. And we're going to see you next time. And as always, happy Sunday. Brother DeWitt, Get us on out of here. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Till I die. Till I die. I will trust.